Hi, in this presentation we're going to talk a little bit about what an impervious cover TMDL is. And we're going to do that by explaining the history of the first one in the nation, which is covering the Yukon campus, as you can see here in the photograph. This is a very brief presentation. If you want something in more detail, want a workshop, please contact the NEMO program. So let's look at this phrase, ICTMDL, and let's look at the left hat first stands for impervious cover and really what you need to know as you look at this satellite data that we generated at CLEAR is that we are an urbanizing state in an urbanizing region in an urbanizing country. So here all the red stuff is development. And if you look at the last over 100 years, it can be summarized by this beautiful postcard which shows the beautiful Park River going through the beautiful downtown Hartford area. And this is what the Park River looks like now. It's a tunnel underneath the city. The reason for a lot of these changes with urbanization has to do with impervious cover or impervious surfaces. So the hard surfaces, cement, asphalt, roofing that prevent water from percolating into the soil and cause water quality and quantity problems. As far as quality, stormwater is the number one source of water pollution in the United States, according to the EPA. That runoff's got a lot of stuff in it. And as far as quantity, we've had a lot of well-publicized flooding events with some of the big storms over the last couple of years. So let's look at the right side, TMDL, which stands for Total Maximum Daily Load. It's part of the Clean Water Act. It's basically a pollutant budget for a, a given body of water. And states are required to develop a list of these polluted or so-called impaired waters that need TMDLs. And then the TMDLs have quantitative limits for specific pollutants like sediment or nitrogen, etc. But if you look at a list of impaired waters, and in this case Connecticut, in an urbanizing state, those big two red bars on the top representing most of the impaired waters, the source of impairment is either unknown or it's unspecified urban stormwater. So if you don't really know or you know it's stormwater but you don't know the specifics, what are you going to do? Well, along comes a really smart guy at Connecticut Deep. And he thinks of a national database that's been building for the last 30 years or so that shows that as watershed impervious cover goes up, the quality of the receiving stream goes down. So that's great, but what about Connecticut? Well, Deep took their bug data, their macroinvertebrate data, which is a great indicator of long-term health of a stream, and matched it with Clear's impervious cover data and found this. They had 125 sites and none of them that had impervious cover over 12% in their watershed met the state criteria for a healthy stream. So based on that, they created the ICTMDL. It's a surrogate pollutant approach, so ice, impervious cover is not a pollutant in and of itself, but it's a great indicator for the complex uh, series of things that happens when you urbanize. And they applied it to Eagleville Brook, which is represented here by uh, the old friendly husky, but now we're supposed to be using the very fierce husky. But in any case, it's been going very well for the last five years or so, and we disconnected about seven football fields worth of impervious cover, and we've kept about 56 Olympic pools of stormwater out of Eagleville Brook. So it's been successful so far, and we hope it'll continue. Lastly, I think we have three states, three states that we're aware of, Connecticut, North Carolina, and Maine, that are doing the impervious cover TMDL, and we hope this approach will spread. Although we're a little bit worried because Connecticut and North Carolina are currently feuding over who created the first airplane. But that's a whole other presentation.